Fun day, fun day, everybody. Welcome to the first installment of the yoga classroom where spirituality and science meet. Now, I'm starting this on a Monday for a very good reason because in Kabbalah mysticism, they say that each day of the week is attached to a planet in our solar system. Monday is actually ruled by the moon, okay? And they also say that according to your birthday, your, the exact day and year that you were born, that there are four main planets, depending on what they're doing, that will influence our lives as an individual. One of my planets just happens to be the moon. Now, they also say that um, Monday is a business planet. And I think that's very interesting because in the four places where my planets are, the moon is actually my business moon. So, with that said, another part of Kabbalah mysticism talks about the influences it, and the moon has a tendency to be a karmic planet, meaning it's really necessary sometimes for us to look at the dark side of moon or the shadow side or maybe some of the difficulties or the things that we've gone through in the past to be in alignment to have a really positive Monday. Monday is a really big day for me to ground, um, be out in Mother Nature, in, in my feet, because the emotion that if we're out of alignment that's attached to people that have Monday is depression. And I can tell you I've definitely felt with that and I feel that it's very important for me to start speaking out about this because we've just gone through a pandemic. And a pandemic is a physical crisis. But after the physical crisis, what happens is that we usually have an emotional or a mental crisis. And I have been through all of the above. Now, with the pandemic in particular, it has the tendency to put us all in a place of PTSD. Now, this is something that I understand because I am right now in the middle of a 15-year anniversary of three deaths within three weeks that had me close to death with an open heart that reawaken these spiritual gifts for me. So it's very important for me to be speaking out and doing do something different these three weeks. So I will actually be doing my business online and today we're gonna to talk about trauma. I am gonna give you trauma releasing breath at the end of uh, the session. So, you know, stay tuned and we're gonna do a little breath work. Tomorrow we're actually gonna talk about anxiety. Because when we experience PTSD, you, my experience was I waffled between depression and anxiety and what it is is I was depressed because that's worry of what's already happened, worry of my history of the past and then anxiety is worry of the future. So we're just going to talk about what's happened in the past. Now let's bring some science into this. So science is a proven in 91 they discovered it, 94 it was published, that we have 40,000 brain cells at the top of our heart. That's why when I tell people, you know, from the top of my heart, I appreciate you because that's the, that's the intelligence. And that it also shows that the, that the brain is actually in charge. Uh, or, I'm sorry, the heart is actually in charge of the brain. These brain cells in the heart are, are the governing factor for the, for the bigger brain cells up here, okay? Science has also shown that our heart space really only has two main emotions that it relates to fear and love, okay? And that they both can't really exist at the same time. And fear is also one of the things I have dealt a lot with. After I went through my experiences, I became a very angry person. As we see with grief, this is a, this is a normal process. But I was very angry for a long time. And I just want to say to all of you out there that have ever experienced this, I apologize. It was the triggers. It was not the messenger. Please forgive me. Um, I, you know, forgive them. They know not what they do. And I didn't understand, you know, how my walking into this new spirituality was affecting others. And it, it was, it was very um, negative. Let's just say that because it's about moving forward. But we really need to understand. You know, kind of what happened in the past, like I said, on a scientific level sometimes to actually start that progress of going forward. 
So let's talk about, you know, the the fear and the anger. Now, anger is not a rude emotion. Anybody that's seen Brene Brown's work, she's 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 taken it down to three root emotions that we hold in our body that all other, I'd say, negative or karmic emotions are based on. And those are fear, guilt, and shame. And I have been riddled with all three now for 15 years. Fear that if I, you know, went to the beach, I was going to get skin cancer and die like my mom. Well, I already was probably about stage three or stage four before I took my health into my own hands. Okay. Um, guilt that I didn't save my mom or my captain because, you know, there is a possibility that I actually could have done that. I could have made a difference. Now, I, I've given that one up, but that took a really long time to work through. And shame, okay, the difference between guilt and shame is, guilt, I did a bad thing, shame is, I am a bad person. And I have sat with, oh, I have sat with so much shame um, over my actions of, you know, like I said, I didn't know what I was doing. And then what happened with shame is because I was scaring people, because people were worried for me. Um, then there was a lot of silence because they didn't understand me. They didn't understand the way I talked or the things I did because I was really trying to force it on people. I was saying, you must understand what I'm going through. And you can't, cause you can't do that when you start to walk in the spiritual world. There is no textbook to help you through. We all have to find our way in our own spirituality and in connecting into anything outside these three dimensions. Science is proven we're living in 25 dimensions and we're only in three so back to the science of when we're talking about fear guilt and shame okay so science has also shown that when we go through trauma it creates peptides actual physical peptides that connect to our organs so in the case of grief it's gonna attach to the heart so when we're grieving the loss of a job, all the things that COVID brought us, right? The, the relationships, being able to go in circle and yoga classes. And, you know, I can't, I, can't, I can't be with my students and I, I can't reach out and start, you know, being with people and doing all the things about community. One of the number one things out of the four things that lead to happiness and longevity. And these are, these are all based on the studies of centurions. Those that live to be over 100, y'all are invited to my 111th party. I still see it, I still know it's gonna happen, so let's do this together. Our bodies should actually be able to last at least about 140 years. But because we get so overwhelmed with the emotions and the mental part, we, we let our physical body take the hit for it because there is no such thing as a purely physical injury. There is always going to be a mental or an emotional component to it. And it could just be how that injury affected us that that could be the emotional component to it is is how it affected us aftermath okay so um i lost track a little bit uh let me just reset just a moment but so these peptides of trauma when we go through traumatic things will actually attach to our organs mine were attached to my adrenal glands and my kidney when I first went through the things because my adrenal glands went and they didn't shut back down for years. So my adrenal glands in the fight and were in fight and flight from the first experience I experienced, which was 15 years ago last Monday. Okay? And it's not about the experience, guys, because we all have our stuff. My my stuff is no worse or no bigger than yours. It's about the resilience chain. What are you gonna do with it? Okay? PTSD is the disorder. When we sit in this disorder, when we don't look at our triggers, when we don't try and work on a subconscious level, and that is the secret. To remove these peptides from our organs, the only way that you can do that is dealing with it on a subconscious level. Talk therapy can be effective sometimes. If it is deep trauma, and you're not working on hypnotherapy, and if you're not looking at frequency sound healing, okay, it gets us on a subconscious level. Breath work, we're gonna experience breath work today. The easiest thing to get into our subconscious level. Meditation, of course, works. Native American journeying, 
oh my goodness, this has, has been one of my tools to enable me to sit here and actually talk to you today. Um, plant medicine that gets us into the subconscious medicine, highly, highly, highly effective in the right set and in with the right facilitator. That is absolutely key, okay? Super key. So these are just some of the ways, and I'll be sharing every day a little breath work to help us get into our subconscious system to help us through things. Now, with that said, let's just go ahead and deal with some of this trauma that we may have. There is a new breath out there called trauma clearing breath. And it is based on science. It is not a, t a, a traditional yoga breath. I will be teaching some of the traditional yoga breaths because they have withstand the, the time and, 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 and everything because it, it, it's one of the wisdom traditions. Trauma releasing breath is literally just four small sips in through the nose and one big exhale. And when you say exhale on a ha, the seed sound of ha actually gets into our heart. Now it's not the chakra seed sound, it's actually the organ seed sound. So it's a little bit different. It's not so, you know, if you're dealing with breast cancer or lung cancer, then we wanna look at the seed sound of the heart, okay, instead. But for this, we're gonna use ha because all of us have had some, you know, some grief. Like I said, if it wasn't loved ones, for goodness sake, it was a way of life. It was partnerships that couldn't get along because we had to live together, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We could go on forever. But again, it's not what happened. So what we're going to do with it so that we can move on and get out of whatever our dark side of the moon, whatever our depressive state, whatever our trauma, whatever our grief is. Okay. So the other piece, no, we'll wait for that one tomorrow. It's a little more appropriate. So... Um, with the science, we do four short inhales and one long inhale, or one long exhale, pardon me. And I'm, we're gonna do three different breaths right now to warm us up for trauma-releasing breath, and I'm gonna leave you with trauma-releasing breath. We're only gonna do it 13 times, and here's the thing about breath work. We're doing it sitting down to get today because when you do breath work sitting down, it gets into your emotions. Pardon me. When we do, um, so we're, we're getting into our emotions today. Now the first breath that we're going to do was a breath work that makes me laugh because it was a breath work taught by Tony Robbins, Team Tony. I um, did the, the Unleash the Power Within, but unfortunately on day three, the, I unleashed the power within in all the negative stuff. And what happened is I found myself two days later incarcerated in the California psychiatric system. But it's not about the story and the trauma, the most traumatic experience of my life, but also the most influentially growing experience of my life too. And it was necessary. Because I, from that very first moment when I realized where I was and why I was there, that's what unleashed the power within in me and my resilience to have nine days in our system with absolute grace and ease, okay? There were a few things, there were a few stumbling blocks along the way, but I understand why they happened and why they were necessary. And we'll, I'll talk about that when it's time to talk about that. So Tony taught us that, you know, to, to start off your day, let's prime, let's get the breath moving because the breath is really the most essential thing for us to, to, to actually survive, for goodness sakes. But it's also, you know, the, the best thing for us to start creating change is doing breath work. So I'm doing this with my hands already. We're gonna breathe and the hands go up, and you're gonna exhale and the hands go down. When you inhale, the hands are gonna go up. When you exhale, the hands are gonna go down. It's just that simple. And we're gonna breathe in and out of the nose or in through the nose and out through the mouth for this whatever works for you okay we're going to do just 10 of those and then after that together we're going to do some slow down breaths we're going to relax our parasympathetic parasympathetic nervous system by simply exhaling longer than we inhale okay we're gonna all do these exhales today out the mouth because we're letting this all out. 
We're letting these peptides release. We're letting this trauma release out. So let's do all the exhales open mouth today, okay? So 10 of the priming breaths. Tony Robbins, thank you very much. I love you. And then we're gonna have three inhale. And now this one I'd like us to take our hands all the way up. Inhale all the way up. We're gonna put our hands together and we're gonna exhale down through heart center with the hands together, which creates balance. And the exhale is gonna simply be longer than the inhale. And then we're gonna circle around and go up. We're gonna do that three times. And then you're gonna sit with your hands very gently. And then we will move into trauma releasing breath. And again, it is. And we're gonna do 13 of those. Because 13, I was born on the 13th. 13 it isn't about death, it's about death of the old self, death of the things that don't serve us, death of the disses, okay? Death of the disorder, death of the dysfunction, death of the distractions, all right? So let's just get rolling on that. So sit comfortably, try and make your spine as long as you can. When you open up your hips, especially ladies, we hold a lot of trauma in our hips. When you open up your hips, it lets the channels in your body be more fluid. When we sit like this, it kind of stops the energy right here and it'll, it'll have a tendency to get stuck. So however works for you, and let's just go for it. Priming breaths, thank you, Tony Robbins. Ready, inhale, up, exhale, down. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Go at your own pace, inhale, exhale. Stop if you become dizzy, inhale. Exhale, I've lost count. Inhale, three more. Exhale, inhale, exhale. And we're gonna do two more. Inhale, exhale, and I think this is 10. Inhale, and then exhale. Hands on the lap, close the eyes. Let's just sit gently. See where those vibrations, that energy is talking to you in your body. Okay, just notice. Now we're gonna inhale up. Hands together, exhale longer than the inhale. Open mouth, let it go. Giving it a ha if you really feel like it. Inhale up, exhale longer. Close the eyes to go inside. Inhale up, last one. Exhale down. Try and get every little last bit out of the tummy and sit comfortably. If your lower back is hurting, engage the belly muscles to support the low back. Let's just sit comfortably right here just for a moment. Notice what's going on in your body, what you're feeling, any vibrations. Now keep the hands on the lap. If you know a mudra, you can go ahead and make those. I love this one. Putting, making a little heart in the middle of the lap is also effective, connecting the, the thumbs together. And here we go, 13, ready? Inhale four times, exhale out the mouth. Sit gently with the breath. See how it feels in your body. <sighs> Give a little sigh. Mm. And whenever you're ready, start to reawaken the body a little bit. The fingers, bringing the energy, the oxygen, that breath to the toes and the fingers. 
and then inhale those arms as wide as you possibly can those big huge loving arms because you need to hug the most important person in your life and yes that is you wrap those hands around you dip that head into that hard space right there silently aloud say i love you huh, say your name i love you sue good job you're the only person that's been there since the beginning you're the only person that's going to be there till the very, very bitter end, okay? You're the person that you need to give the oxygen and the love to if you're going to make it through on this big blue planet we call life, all right? So thank you for being with me today. I just want to share one last story about trauma, and that is this breath came very essentially for me in a moment of absolute need. I had a bike wreck. And I did a skid across a, a, a driveway in midday in Chula Vista, California um, for a gas station, a very busy intersection. And I immediately could feel my body going into shock because I was bleeding, my, my leg was stuck, I was all tied up, I was bruised, and I was laying right in the middle of the intersection. And my, you know, thank you, the, my inner wisdom just said, and immediately I could feel the stress leaving my, my body as I picked my bike up and made sure I was visual so I didn't get run over. And a kind, a kind young man stopped to see if he could help me and got my bike off to the side of the road and assessed my injuries and realized I didn't need to deal with them then. Assessed my bike, she was fine, a couple more breaths. I was okay to ride my bike another mile or two to get to where I get home and attend to my to, to, to my wounds <laughs> and so this is a breath that you can use any time of day if it does get in and make you feel really emotional push yourself just a little bit now don't take too much because little 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 is the secret but if you can do maybe one or two more you can work through it that is the biggest thing that I learned when I was going through my emotional trauma when I was in the the, the cuckoo's nest one of the drawings I did on that very last day was one who flew through the cuckoo's nest. And flying through the cuckoo's nest is what we have to do because there's no getting over it. There's no getting around it. You're gonna let sleeping dogs lie. They're gonna lie until they get awakened and it's probably gonna be in a really bad situation. Trust me, I know. Saying that I'm fine and not dealing with this trauma that I didn't realize I hadn't dealt with is what took me down that path. My passion is to be here to help all of you never have to experience the things that I have and also start talking very healthily about mental health and stop taking the shame out of these labels, these disses that people give us. Anybody with ADHD, stay tuned. Tomorrow we're talking about anxiety. It is not ADHD, it is ADHG. It's growth. Let's take that disorder and let's make that, you know, attention deficit growth. Because what is ADHD anyways? You, you, are, you are a very good multitasker. But multitasking, as we know, is one of the number one stressors in the world. So, there's a little tidbit for tomorrow. I will be doing this every single day, um, at least this week. So Tuesday is gonna be um, some tapping for anxiety. Wednesday, we're gonna get into some sound healing and yeah, I'm probably gonna be singing on y'all, right? Thursday, we're gonna get into some Reiki. Anybody want some free Reiki? I'm gonna bust out a really nice session of Reiki on you. Friday, dance party, <laughs> right? You want, you want to get our moves going on and have some fun together? We're gonna have a little dance party on Friday and get into the physical body with some movement in a very safe way. Saturday, I don't know, Saturday's a karmic day. That one's up for grabs, so we'll see what happens on Saturday. But Sunday, Sunday, um, you will, I will take you to the, my church, and Sunday we're gonna talk about um, spirituality. And I'll talk a little bit about mine in particular. I'm not gonna force it on you or what have you. Um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty exciting. So we're gonna talk about shamanism and my connection to this earth and the Native American cultures. We're also gonna talk about Jesus and my conversation with him on the 23rd. And I'll just give you one thing. He said thank you everybody for the birthday wishes. He also told me that I'm not gonna talk about our real thing because your relationship with whoever your God is, whoever your Jesus is, whoever your spirituality is, that's important. But the one thing we're gonna discuss all week long is that spirituality is essential. 
We can know the science, but the spirituality is really the key, that believing in something bigger than us, that, that knowing, that trust in our God, in the divine matrix, in the field of great dreams, or whatever you call it. And if none of that makes sense to you, that's okay. Stay tuned, maybe that's what we talk about on Saturday, is the divine matrix, and how we can connect to our God, to God, to your higher power. You know, anybody going through, through um, alcoholism, you know, that is one of the main steps for the 12 steps is what's your higher power? You know, how do you define it? Not how religion or how somebody else has taught you, but what it means to you. So thank you so much for letting me share. This is just feeling absolutely fabulous on a moon day when, you know, usually I, I'm in my head quite a bit. Um, I will let you know I have a, a website out there and it's not in alignment yet. I will be working to get that updated um, these next couple days. And then the last thing, I'm gonna give you two drawings, uh, free drawings, because um, meditation is, like I said, one of the ways to get into it. And these two drawings are basically the duality of what I was going through all this time before I really understand this trauma. And the first one is the face of fear, and the other one is the face of love. So it's basically a representation of my heart and I let you color them to get over our fears and to embrace that love, okay? So with that said, the name of the piece is called The Art of Being Clean, if you've never seen it before. And all my art is actually a historical documentation of my spiritual awakening. But the art actually came before the lessons learned, and that's the interesting part about it. So stay tuned because as I unfold as an artist, I really am an intuitive artist because all these messages and all these things came before that. Anybody that has one of my pieces of artwork that has the moon in it, they deal with the same thing I have dealt with and that is depression. You know, whether they're a moon child or not, um, or whether it's just something that's a byproduct of, of, of our life, of living and going through these things because without the bad times, we'd never know the good times. Right? We can't kid ourselves. These are essential growing points in our life and how we handle them and how we deal with them is what creates the balance, the big, balance, the big red balancing is all about. So, everybody have a beautiful moon day. Get your feet on the ground. I will post a movie, or I, yeah, I'm gonna post a link to the movie about the earthing movie that really helps those of us um, connect and uh, get out of our heads so much on those days. Uh, blessings and as they say in the wisdom cultures of yoga the light in me honors the light in you without the student there is no teacher and every good teacher is always in student mind namaste my friends namaste be well for a beautiful day happy healing and connect with me if you've got any questions